Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm reviewing the Kato P42 sound equipped locomotives. Both the lock sound version and the tsunami version are here, so we'll be reviewing and listening to both of these locomotives. So we've got a lot of stuff to cover, so let's get started. First, I want you to see what you get out of the box, so we'll be doing the unboxing together. I'm going to pull the lid off this lock sound version. Inside, you have a Kato reference guide. It's a quick reference guide. It goes over what the DCC number is on, which is three standard for all DCC decoders. A little fun fact is Kato actually installed these at their Schaumburg, Illinois facility. So they had to hand install each one of these because the DC versions are already out, but they're unique and they're a little tricky to install DCC and sound in. So here's the locomotive in the box. It's got a nice brace under the center. And it says up there in the corner it's factory equipped with lock sound. So we're going to shift this out of the box here. And looks like we lost a, f a wheel right away. Okay, that's installed back. Be very careful when you pull these out because I just pulled this out for the first time and there's a wheel hanging by just the wires so those wheels may not be secure. And we'll get, in, we'll get into those later because these wheels are actually the motors. This is a dual motor locomotive and it's very heavy. It has a good weight to it. I would compare it to the MTH SD70 ACE in weight or very close to that weight class. But let's go over some of the specs for this locomotive before we get started on the actual review. You've got the Naman sound versions that were already released. They MSRP'd for $198 and they're still out there. Those are DC, straight DC, and it takes quite a bit of work to convert them to DCC from what I see online. Then you've got the sound versions, which are just now releasing. You'll probably see them pop into your hobby shops in the next couple of days. They are lock sound or tsunami. Those are your two options. MSRP for lock sound is 318 and tsunami is 328. Now with those prices, as always, keep in mind you're going to have dealer discounts from different online hobby shops and brick and mortar hobby shops. They're also releasing here in the next uh, several months the Amtrak anniversary units, number 156 and number 66. But as far as these Phase 5 locomotives, which are currently out, there's three road num numbers available, and that's 161, 68, and 188. Today I've got 188 and 161. 188 is the Tsunami, and 161 is the Lock Sound, and we'll be listening to both of those later on. Now let's go ahead and start on the front-to-back review, showing you some of the details. The first two things that jumps out at me on these locomotives are that there aren't any windshield wipers on the front windshield here, and there aren't any mirrors that should be positioned at the front of the side windows here. So those details are not included on the Kato models, and they're not in the box to install yourself. So you'll be on your own to find your own detail kit, or maybe a spare parts kit from an Atherin locomotive to install those. Working our way down, the windshield wipers are curved. There had been some talk about them being flat. There is a slight curvature. This has an updated uh, uh, new nose design that Amtrak put on their later P42s. Speaking of the nose, you've got clear print on the Amtrak logo. I looked at this under magnification. It's not smudged at any which way. It's clear and crisp on the print, even under magnification. Working down to the nose here, You've got the nose headlight. There is no clear panel protecting the nose headlight like on the prototype, which would be clear plastic on this model, but that's not there. It's just the headlight. They omitted putting any clear panel in front of that. Working our way further down, you've got the ditch lights here, which we'll get into later, but they do not flash. They are steady even when the horn blows. And the coupler, which I'm not sure what brand it is, if it's just Kato's own coupler, but it is a plastic coupler and it's a lot larger than a scale coupler, or fairly larger than a scale coupler. Working our way further down, you've got the snow plow, which is done correct for the prototype. You've got the little divot here that's accurate for the prototype. 
so everything looks correct there. And just so you guys know, I've literally got a picture of the prototype, the exact same road number, to take a look at, to kind of compare and show you guys things that jump out to me in the comparison. All right, let's continue to the midsection and rear of the locomotive. On the front to midsection of this locomotive, you've got the ice skate antennas up top and a nice antenna array that is accurate to the prototype. You've got molded grab irons, not a big deal on this model because the grab irons that go alongside the cab entry are so close to the body, it's not a big deal to have them molded on versus separately applied. Working towards the back, you've got the Airchime K5LA horn here that's accurately done. I actually pulled up a photograph of the K5LA horn just to double check, and it is correct. And then you've got this GPS antenna dome, which actually does some functions on the DC model. It controls lights. Uh, Cato has more information on that. Looking at the front trucks, one thing I want to mention about this front ladder here is it removes. You can remove this front ladder if you have smaller radius uh, curves on your layout. So for example, according to Kato's website, you take off these front ladders and you can operate on a minimum of 15 inch curves, which is pretty small. So for those folks that have a smaller radius on their layout, there you go. You've got the grills here that or they look pretty shallow, they have no depth to them, but they're on the locomotive. They're not like a really detailed uh, grill. This locomotive overall isn't in great detail, so it's just kind of a larger version of the Inscale Kato or Kato P42. Working to the back, you see the number 161 clear and crisp. I forgot to mention earlier that the Amtrak logo is nicely done. It has a gray paint that has a reflective surface but it's not the sparkly gray that you get in the Atherin version of this locomotive. You've got the exhaust here that's accurately done. There are no warning labels on the top of the locomotive which is actually correct for the Kato P42 and the prototype. You've got the rear radiator fan grill here, very large but well done. Let's take a look at that just up close. As you can see uh, there is a depth to that and it shows a little bit of a fan blades coming through there. I'm not exactly sure how they did that but they've done it. So it does have a little depth to it and it has a three-dimensional appearance. And then these rear grills here are actually supposed to be see-through. I don't see that as the case with the this unit maybe because of the sound installation or something, but from what I had read online, they're supposed to be see-through, but I don't see that. They do have depth though, and they do have the patterns, the V patterns back here. Now let's take a look at the trucks real quick. So you have nice detail on the trucks. You guys can really go to town on the uh, prototypical accuracy of them, but they look prototypically correct to me for what photos I've seen. Here's a quick view of the other side of the locomotive, and one thing I didn't mention is the coupler on the back too. It seems to extend pretty far out. People have asked whether these couplers are easily replaceable. As you see, there's no screws on the coupler box. It appears they just pop off, and then you can replace the coupler, but I haven't actually gone in and attempted to replace the coupler yet. While we're looking at the underside of the locomotive, let's talk about the actual trucks, because that's where the motors are. These are coreless motors, there's dual motors, it has a lot of weight to it, so that means it has excellent pulling power. And if you have the Walther's Superliners, you know that you need pulling power if you don't tweak those things, because they're heavy and they don't roll very freely. Like I said, I had to put oil on mine and actually tune the trucks in order to get them to roll freely. But this beast would be able to pull them right out of the box, because it's pretty heavy. But anyway, right under here, these things simply pop off. Well, I thought they simply pop off like that, and they're still attached to wires, so you want to be careful. But you can see that that is the motor, and there's two motors in each locomotive, one on each set of trucks. And you just pop this thing back on, and you're good to go. But that is how the motors work. Like I said, they are cordless motors, and that leaves all the room in the center of the locomotive for weight, which is why these things are such great pullers. Speaking of pulling, that's part of operation, so let's move on to operation of this locomotive, listen to some sounds, and then actually do a pull. 
As you can see, I've dimmed the lights so that you can see the headlights and ditch lights better so you can get a good feel for whether you feel they're prototypically accurate or not. Now, in order to get those lights to come on, obviously I've got to apply track power. Applying track power will also initiate the startup sequence of the sounds, which is the locomotive itself. So here we go. So there you have the startup sequence in Dolby Digital Surround Sound. Now we're going to go in the bell and horn. Again, just a reminder, this is the lock sound version and I'll show you the tsunami sound version here in a moment. Here's the bell. Also, you'll notice they have lighted number boards. Now here's something I haven't seen done in a model before on a decoder. Maybe I'm a little behind the times, maybe some of you have seen this before, but when I hit the horn, the bell automatically starts. I'm not having the bell on separately, I'm just hitting the horn and the bell is going on itself, just like on the prototypes. Let's do that again one more time, and then we'll switch over to the Tsunami version. So there you have it. Now, let's listen to the sounds of the Tsunami version of this Kato P42. Now you're looking at the Tsunami version of the Kato P42, and just like the lock sound version, this locomotive has a startup sequence when you apply track power. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the lights with F0. Listen to the bell. And the horn. There's the short horn. And the long horn, there you go. And so there you have it, both the sounds on the Kato P42 Tsunami and Lock Sound. Now let's go back to the Lock Sound to finish up this review. One thing I want to show you real quick on the Lock Sound version is the shutdown sequence. I didn't realize that this was here, but I want you to listen to the shutdown sequence, which is actually F8. Again, this is the Lock Sound version. So there you have it, the shutdown sequence. For you guys that are really anal retentive, don't get mad at me because my crossing gates are up. I've hired HO scale police officers 
to block off the roads in case any traffic comes. All right, with that said, let's go ahead with this quiet. Listen to the motor itself and whether the motor makes much noise. As we're pulling my entire, I believe it's 10 car fleet, actually 11 cars if you include the baggage car of the Amtrak Empire Builder. Keep in mind there's been no break-in period. So this is easily going to be able to pull my entire set, just one locomotive where it takes two with Atherns P42s. Keep in mind though that I have done some truck tuning to these but it still takes two P42s but there's going to be no question the pulling power of this locomotive. It is a little noisy at the beginning. I did hear just a tiny bit of noise but pretty low when you consider you're dealing with a lot of moving parts and a lot lower than most locomotives that I've reviewed and listened to. We're doing a full speed run by so you can see the max speed of this locomotive. So here you go. This locomotive has momentum built in so it's not going to stop on a dime and it speeds up slowly. But now let's look at the drive at slow speeds. I've got 128 speed steps programmed onto my DCC controller so I'm just going to go to 1 and we'll see how this reacts. 1 you hear a bit of humming and it's barely moving along. There's 2 speed steps. A little more humming. Barely moving along. Keep in mind though it is pulling this large consist. Three, there you go. Four speed steps. And five speed steps. And six. And seven. And we'll just stop there. I just wanted to demonstrate to you the smoothness of the drive. It's pretty responsive. It's not the best I've seen, but it's definitely not the worst I've seen. And it's fairly quiet. Again, with sound equipped locomotives, it's not going to be a big problem if you're operating with the sound on most of the time. Now keep in mind, this also operates in DC and DCC mode. And in the DC mode, it does make sounds. There's more information in the pamphlet that talks about the DC mode and basically tells you that it creates sounds in DC the sound will function for the engine motor sounds only. There's no horn or bell or anything. So we've covered quite a bit of information in this Kato HO Scale P42 review, but there are things I've missed. I'm only human. So feel free to mention things in the comments that are imperative on this locomotive for others to hear. There is one thing I do want to mention I missed, and that's the front and rear red marker lights. They're on both sides of the headlight and the tail light on each locomotive, and they can be controlled by your functions on your DCC controller. Other than that, I've covered about as much as I can think of, so like I said, feel free to mention anything that I've missed. With that said, overall, my opinion of these locomotives is a little higher than when they were first released. When they were first released, I was hung up on the fact that they didn't have windshield wipers, side mirrors, and some of the details on the body were not prototypically accurate. But I think the sound, operation, weight of these locomotives really makes up for it. So in my opinion, for an MSRP of 328 for the Tsunami, 318 for the Lock Sound, and 198 for the DC version of these locomotives, you, especially with the discounts you can get, you know, I say go for it. Especially if you can go find detail kits and add details yourself and you don't mind doing that. I've got some detail kits I may be detailing these up with later. Go for it if you're up for that. If you're hung up on some of the prototypical accuracy or inaccuracies of this model in this case, I would go ahead and stick with the Atherin units and maybe just grab a couple, two to three, to pull your consist versus, versus the one of which Cato can pull because of the weight difference. Well, guys, I'm going to leave you with a run-by of these two locomotives. The, my favorite, which is the Lock Sound, will be in the front, 
and it'll be on my DCC layout down here. I'll leave you with a run by of that. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.